about the truth. The matter. Just the truth. Just the veritas. Just the facts. Is this yours? And the wa that water is moving too. Which water? Hold that for a minute. Hold that for a minute. All right, let me just say this first. Up. Webster Tarley is a great political mind. He has a master's in, well, uh, all economy. He's an economist, but he also has a doctorate in history. Very smart guy. I've done my own research. His perspective on history is dead on. He has had an obsession with Ron Paul in the last six months. I'm a cockroach, you name it. And now, even though Ron Paul... Yeah, I heard it. Uh, even though Ron Paul... Uh, okay, we're going to go to you in a minute, Webster. Even though Ron Paul is now not even, you know, obviously in the running now because election fraud and things, he obsesses on what the Huffington Post, Salon, all the big foundation groups have put out. When they came out and confronted me this week, they said, well, this, uh, the founder of, of PayPal is giving him millions. As Ron Paul said six months ago, I have no control over who gives me money. Uh, yes, one member of the Bilderberg Group gives me money, but the rest of them are taxing. They want big government for corporate welfare. But I like Tarpley, and if he wants to obsess over Ron Paul, that's fine. So you can go over that first, because I like Tarpley. Okay? But then I'd like to ask Tarpley about what he really knows about the first Russian in modern history, Ed Bilderberg, Kasparov, all the things that means, the fact that no fan of Russia or China, but compared to our criminal government, there's no d doubt the West is trying to start a thermal nuclear war. There's no doubt they're moving weapons in. I mean, you have and Putin have said they'll nuke the West. There's no doubt they're using Al Qaeda in Syria. There's no doubt they took over Libya and Webster had the courage to go there and cover that. I respect Webster for his courage. I really do. And I think that this Ron Paul obsession is a, is a dead letter. But he wants to talk about it. We're going to cover it. So can we just spend five minutes on that? And then I really want to take on things that I know you're accurate on. Uh, but again, to say that one Bilderberg, because they want to co-op the libertarian movement to try to privatize things, not real privatization, but have government takeover of something, and then, and, then, and then corporations act as government, that's not what Ron Paul stands for. Webster's point, though, about uh, Rand meeting with Mitt Romney, I knew that Romney and them were talking about that. I knew that, that was being discussed. And Rand told me on and off, he said, well... I won't compromise on my ideals, so that's the difference. I probably won't even get it. Webster sees that as total proof of a sellout. I know the system and the establishment demonizes Ron Paul. I know from our moles inside, including people in security and other places, I'll leave it at that, that when they pull up, they see us as Ron Paul supporters out there protesting them, and they say, I hope that you know Ron Paul dies in a plane crash. I mean, that's a real source. That's real stuff. I didn't just go from Tucker, who I trust, because he's proven stuff. I, I called my people, and they said, well, we didn't hear that, but, yeah, they cuss Ron Paul. And then Webster jokes and says, oh, my, my source is the major pensions. They hate him. They don't get pensions working at the Marriott. Yeah, whatever. The, yeah, the precious food stamps. The, I mean, look, 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 look at the stuff. The point is you're getting us dependent on the bankers. The point is get into your Ron Paul stuff, but then I want to lead into the other areas. So Webster... Uh, Richard Reeves doing a great job is going to hold the mic over there and we are streaming out on two systems Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv Ron Paul, the enemy of humanity, tell us about it Well let's actually start with Rand Paul, right? You seem to think that Rand Paul has some kind of integrity My information is that Rand Paul made a pilgrimage secretly to the offices of the Weekly Standard and uh, essentially deal with William Crystal that Rand Paul would uh, commit to being open to an attack on Iran, which he is in public. He he's, says that he's willing to entertain an attack on Iran and that he would support, vote for, economic warfare measures against Iran. Now we've just had Ron and Paul flirting in public with Romney and he's obviously making a bid for the vice presidential spot. Now, based on the Bilderberger group here, it looks like Mitch Daniels is in the line ahead of Rand Paul. But even so, 
we should remember that the whole idea of the Ron Paul campaign was to get rent as vice president. In other words, if you've been knocking yourself out, sweating blood, giving money bombs and whatever it is, to Ron Paul, you got to realize that the whole purpose of that is to get Rand on the Republican ticket for vice president. Because even though he has no qualifications, he thinks he should be president. It reminds me of other people that we've, we've passed. The fact is, though, that Romney has now gone over the 1144 mark on his own power. So he won't need Ron Paul at the convention to transfer the delegates to him. So at that point, My Rand... My call was is that Romney reached out to Rand. I mean, Rand shouldn't meet with him? It's the deal in the background. Now, let's talk about the deal. The deal is that Romney is a weak candidate, and he knows it. He needs so, conservative credentials. He's got to have two wingmen. He's got to have a left wing man. That was his cousin, his cousin Huntsman. Huntsman being uh, this Mormon billionaire. So Huntsman was the main purpose in those debates, was to run interference for, for uh, Romney, to uh, fend off attacks, and whoever was the main, main enemy of, Ron, uh, of, of Romney at the time, whether it was Bachman or Cain or Perry or Gingrich or Santorum, whoever it was, the main activity of Ron Paul was to attack Romney's main enemy at any given time. He also did other services. In Virginia primary, here we are in Virginia, we had a primary. This was a head-on, a one-to-one -one primary, Paul against Romney. Ron Paul punted. He wouldn't campaign because he was afraid of defeating Romney. Now, that might have caused the collapse of the Romney campaign. So Ron Paul's goal is to keep Romney as the leading candidate, but at the same time get enough delegates so that he is indispensable for Romney. And he wasn't able to thread a couple of other things. Romney wanted to avoid debates. The Georgia debate was aborted because Romney said he didn't want to go. Ron Paul agreed he didn't want to go. The art, same story, didn't want to go. Uh, so R Ron Paul is a kind of an auxiliary to the entire Romney campaign. That was always a talking point. What's your proof? This is my What's your discovery. I, I was out of the gate on the 10th of January with this, the 10th of January. My proof is if you watch those Republican debates and you can't see that Romney is there to be is is being helped by Rand Paul, Ron Paul. You don't have any political judgment. In other words, it's Paul ran five different ads again. Me, that was an establishment Democratic talking point. This was the first one. It was mild. It was that he was a flip flopper. Everybody else was a criminal or whatever he was. They are, but Romney was only a flip flopper. Let's take the Michigan primary. The the function of Ron Paul is to take ten or fifteen percent of anti-establishment Republican voters and put them in the deep freeze, put them in the, in the candidate who's never going to win, can't get the nomination. Romney's problem was that the Republican Party is maybe 40 percent people, you know, country club, plutocrats, whatever, who would vote for Romney. That leaves 50, 60 percent who would vote for an anti candidate. So what Ron Paul does is take 15 percent, sometimes 17 percent of the anti-establishment Republican votes off the table. Now, Michigan primary, look at a couple of others, but Michigan is the clearest. Romney won Michigan by a paper-thin margin. That's the Ron Paul effect. Now, Ron Paul didn't win Michigan, but he did pay with his money for anti-Santorum uh, uh, election ads. So you're in the presence of a deception operation. This is not real. Ron Paul is famous as a nepotist. My figures are that he's got 60 people plus of his relatives, relatives, on the congressional office payroll or on the payroll of his campaign. Jesse Benton, that a lot of people in the Ron Paul campaign tell me they can't stand, is to Ron Paul's granddaughter, I believe, right? And remember, the entire purpose of the campaign is nepotism. It's to feather the nest for little Rand so that he had a future. And again, let's look at who this is. This is Romney. Now, people People, I think the, the better people who are interested in Ron Paul, they don't really understand economics, although they should. So Obama's going to save us? No. no. Uh, the, the, the Bilderberg people are, are turning uh, for Romney. Romney, Mitch Daniels. But they just, the word I've got is Romney is in from all the big power brokers. Okay, but that's, that's the Bilderberg. Bilderberg is throwing their weight, which is considerable, on the side of Romney. 
Mitch Dang. But now you you want to get me away from this uh, this this last point oh, that I had. I'm not trying to get you away from anything, Webster. I came over here to interview uh, Jim Hooker, and I and, and I nicely. You're my friend. I said I'd interview you. You were interrupting, telling me shut up, and now you're saying I want to keep you from the audience. That's bullshit. Now listen, that's bullshit. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, I'm interviewing you. I'm not trying to censor you, but I've used on all this. That's all. For heaven's sakes, I'm not trying to shut you down. Make your point. I want to get your point on Al-Qaeda, Syria, Libya, Russia, uh, the Russian at the meeting. I want to talk about that instead of this obsession about Ron Paul. A vote for Ron Paul was a vote for Romney. And this is the tragic reality. And I sympathize with people who were were duped in this regard. Remember, Ron Paul vote, runs as an anti-war candidate, even though he voted for the Afghan war. Everybody should remember, Ron Paul voted for the Afghan war. Like Kerry, he was for the Afghan war before he was against it. Now he's against it. Now let's look at Romney. If you're supporting Romney, what are you going to get? The biggest warmonger. Romney is out there saying that Russia is the main strategic enemy of the United States, and Romney is out there saying that he doesn't want the option to attack Iran in, 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 on the table. He wants it in his hand. So a vote for... Well, there you go, Webster. Ron Paul's a warmonger. Two days after 9-11, he says, okay, use of force Afghanistan to get bin Laden. Now, now you're saying he's a warmonger. He's been against all these damn wars. Voted for the Afghan war. Barbara Lee voted I think this is sophistic, Tarpley. I'm very embarrassed. Ron Paul voted for it. You look for a statesman, Barbara Lee is a statesman. Ron Paul didn't make the... Grade. The difference is you have a belief in the state to empower Ron Paul doesn't. You're dodging the issue. If the big thing with Ron Paul is that he's against imperialist wars, how come he voted for the Afghan war? Where's, where, where's the beef? In other now, the underlying all this, right? We're talking about the Mormons, okay? An important issue. The theology of the Mormons is that our anti-black the, the, the holy books yeah right the holy books of the mormon church say that the blacks black population afro-americans are the spawn of the people who sided with lucifer in the great battle in heaven this was then away in 1978 i would say that ron paul represents the southern jurisdiction of the scottish right of freemasonry which means the hey, old confederates on, Mason versus groups, some good, some bad. There's no proof of Ron Paul and Masonry. You are pulling out. Why are, why are the, why are the globalists so upset at Ron Paul? The daughters are in the Rainbow Girls. The parents are all Freemasons. I think there's a pretty good case. that? They never produced the proof on that. You're going off rumors, Tarpley. I think that's pretty good research. Anyway, let so let him now, let him. So now, I thought you liked the American system. I'm not endorsing the Masons, but George Washington and all those guys. Now, if you're a Mason, now if you're a Mason, you're the devil. Not the devil, but when you put that together with the rest of this stuff, what I see, El Diablo. I see a convergence between the Scottish Rite Freemasons, Mormonism, which is a religion which has profound Freemasonic overtones. It is a Masonic religion. Yeah, I, I I think there is this element to it. Yes. So, right now we have Rand Paul flirting with Romney in public, and I, if I were a Ron Paul supporter, my worldview would be crashing to the ground right now. After all that work and all sacrifices. Now, Alex, let sure me that, talk to that, you. Be let sure that states' know. rights movement is destroyed. Let me talk, yeah, states' rights has always been a reactionary slogan. States' rights meant... Only the federal supreme government will save us for Soviet recollectivization. Yes, only Sovietism will save us. This is serious now. No, Get I'm Ron almost Paul. finished. I'm almost finished. Get if Ron I could Paul. just remember what the last point was. Uh, <laughs> Brain buggers. 2.7. Oh. Brain buggers. Look, uh, to talk then about Ron Paul's economics, let's get down. The thing that got me going on, Ron Paul made a terrible mistake. He published his economic views on his website in the Restore America program. Now, Ron Paul, when he gets up on the on the stump, Ron Paul can dance and bob and weave and dan you know, shuffle with the best of them. But when he puts the numbers on the page, let's look at the United States. You got about 50 people who, thanks to Bill Clinton, he said it's going to be slowly. Are in? Man. No one. Can no. Say no. Been successful. No. 
No. He talks about one trillion dollars in cuts in one one trillion dollars in cuts in the first year, and then balance the, the budget. Bankers, they don't want that. They want us to. They seem it. to want it. Quite a few of them do want it. Peter. Teal is a pretty banker, and he seems to think He's it's great. only one member. I don't know how many you need. Any. Come right. on, you got to so, stop this stuff. Well, your obsession with Ron Paul. It's not. No, you, your obsession with defending him. No, you Let me talk to you. You are better than Ron Paul. You don't need Ron Paul. Let's take an issue like 9-11. You have stuck to your guns on 9-11 All truth. Right, since you brought that up, Paul was asked four years ago about it. And again on January. And he said, well, he he's been so busy he hasn't you know, been able to deal with it. But he knows about... On, but he knows about false flag. Well, let me talk. It's okay if I talk. Fal you asked me a question. You asked me a question. I'm giving you like five minutes at a time, Tarbley. Ron Paul, he knows false flag terror is real. There's been a CIA coup. All of that. Ron Paul, I know him. Did he say that on the presidential debates? He said that on my show and others. I know Ron Paul's family, man. He, he Ron Paul is good. All I know is there's bigger. Why are you so obsessed with Ron Paul? I see lots of people who are useful and productive people. Useful idiots for your Soviet model? Who are getting hijacked by a flim flam. All right. Ron Paul is the most successful con. Six, 60 seconds on your obsession with him. I want to get to all these other issues. <laughs> oh, really? Only Ron Paul. In the entire galaxy, it's all Ron Paul. Not Syria, no. not Libya, not Russia. Not NATO, not Europe collapsing, not the pigs being sucked dry. Ron Paul, Ron Paul, he's so evil, he's so bad. Tarpley, Tarpley, he'll save us, along with the communists. You are undercutting. If you want to protest Bilderberg, I would say to you, go out there and say, Ron Paul, Ron Paul. I know a lot of people, including myself, who say, I don't want to hear about any reactionary Republican for the rest of my life. I want a good communist candidate. I don't want any of them. I know a lot of people who, after Bush swore that they would never vote for a reactionary Republican for 10,000 years. And now hey, I'm against power structure. Yeah, can, we now, the can, we now can we now move on to the next? Can we now move on to the next? Do we move? Why do we have to be tied to a cynical public? I exposed Obama. I exposed Bush. I exposed Bush. But you're running interference for Ron Paul, and he's running interference for Romney. Where does that leave you? Listen. Uh, I mean. Romney's an unknown country. I've exposed his ties to Bain, all of it. Now, listen, stop right there. Finish up with your Ron Paul thing. Let's move on to the next subject. Go ahead. <laughs> Hold that. Go ahead. A vote for, Rom for Ron Paul was a vote for Romney. Show you love. So you're... No, no. No. I, I take second Tarkley, place... move on from the Ron Paul I take thing. second place Winston to nobody. I, I was the first Tarkley, out of the so. gate. I was the first, the first, I think, in the relevant universe to expose Obama. So I have the credential. In other words, I was telling left liberals in 2008, you're being duped. Watch like out. Can we Today, to World War III, I tell please? people like you, you're being duped by Ron Paul. Spit. Same story. Can we move on to the next issue. <laughs> I suppose. Now, let me just talk about your triumphalism, right? What you're, what you're saying that... Uh, the Patriot Movement is whatever this is. Oh, we're failing. Let's, You're such a good friend of liberty. Let's talk about let's talk about something You're real. Out of live feed soon. You better get another Okay. Let's talk about what it takes. You want to break the power of finance capitalism because that's what that's what Bilderberg is. Like ten minutes on batteries. Builder Bilderberg is finance capitalism in NATO framework. What is you it? want to break? You, centralized government. You want to break their power. You better find an example that works. Now, Info. Ron com. Paul doesn't work. Ron Paul doesn't work. Adbusters. Adbusters. Come on, you got to stop heckling like I'm that. I'm just joking, Webster. Yeah, now but, I got to in. Get into the other issues. Yeah, I, I, I heard am. how bad Ron Paul is. So, not Ron Paul and not Occupy Wall Street are effective. What is effective? Let's look at Greece, the Syriza movement of Alexis Tsipras. That has gone from 4% to 30 percent. One of the big themes that's going on in this uh, Bilderberger meeting is that they are terrified of Alexis Tsipras and the Syriza movement. Why? Because he has all the things we don't have. They have a leader, that's Tsipras himself. They have an organization, that is the Syriza, which is 12 components 
that have now been welded together into the most fighting force in the country. They now have a program. Let's go through the program. It's not like Ron Paul's. It says, roll back austerity, no way cuts, no pension cuts. If public workers are fired, hire them again. Second point, stop anti-worker measures, stop union busting. Rand Paul and Ron for union busting, right? They're scabbing on every union in the country. But in Syriza, it's the opposite. Third point, social justice. I know some people think that's a terrible thing. Fourth point, investigate the crash, put the felon bankers in jail. And the fifth point, debt moratorium. Don't pay Goldman Sachs, don't pay Morgan Stanley, don't pay J.P. Morgan Chase. This is okay. all fraud. It's all fraud. This, this is what the bankers hate and fear. This is what is winning in Greece. Now, if you want to break the power of finance capital, you've got to have something on that along those lines. I would say one of the main themes being debated in here is the question of whether there'll be a coup d'etat in, in the next two weeks. The elections are on June 17th. Right now, Syriza will emerge as the largest party. The trick of the Greek parliament is if you come in first, you get 50 votes extra. You get a, a bonus for coming in first. If they do, we will have essentially the first anti-banker government in the Western world. No, no, Iceland, this Iceland, is, Iceland. They never had an anti-banker government. They, they never it had it. They threw it out. They, they had a social democrat who was finding ways to... The other thing about Iceland, the stuff about Iceland is baloney. You know why? Because the living standard in Iceland has been cut in half. The devaluation of the Icelandic crap cut the living standard in half. So if you want to be serious about breaking the power of the bankers, you better have those five things. A leader, an organization, a program, I guess it's four, and a, and a strategy. And the strategy is no austerity, no deals, don't enter into any austerity coalitions. <laughs> now, the other thing is, you're concerned about dictator. I'll tell you how dictatorship comes. One way is what we just saw in Greece, right? In Athens, there could be a NATO coup in Greece because Syriza, uh, Cyprus has gone on television. There shouldn't be any Greek soldiers in Afghanistan. Why are we in NATO? And we've now got similar things going on in Macedonia, in Serbia, in Montenegro, to some degree, to Croatia. And they There's a revolt no up front to any foreign soldiers in Greece. Yes, and they should, they should essentially attend, they should get out of NATO. NATO should, should essentially be busted up. But the, the intelligence of Tsipras is he doesn't put that up front. He puts, he puts the, the uh, demands that actually have mass traction. Demands that have mass traction are the ones that do something to help working families solve their immediate problems in a condition of depression. So that's what's going on. Now, dictatorship, right? You're against dictatorship. Let's see how it comes. Let's look first of all at Michigan. We have the reactionary, or really Governor Snyder in Michigan. And he says, emergency management law. He says, if I don't like, if I don't like the government, governor of uh, the mayor of Benton Harbor, if I don't Lint and Pontiac and a course, and if I don't like the Detroit school system, I get to send in a dictator and he becomes the austerity dictator of those places. It's all been taken over by Rajoy, who was basically the neo-fascist prime minister of Spain, Rajoy says, if Andalusia, under the socialists, won't carry out my austerity decrees, right, and austerity, we know who's for austerity here, he says, I get to send in a dictator. Now, the worst one is Trichet, the head of the, former head of the European Central Bank, who's now on record saying, if, and this is a speech given at the Peterson Institute in Washington, Trichet says, if there's a, that's not carrying out sound economic policies, we send in a dictator. The prime minister is out. The parliament is out. We dictate economic that's policy. Technocrats. That's technocrats. That's that's uh, Papa Demos in uh, in Greece, who's from uh, the Boston Fed. That's Monti in Italy, who's from Goldman Sachs. Uh, that's Draghi in the European Central Bank. In Spain, we have Guindos, the uh, fascist uh, neo-fascist uh, finance minister. He's brothers. But again, you want to break that stuff. You've got to have organization. You've got to be able to carry out a general strike. I understand that. You've got to be able to break their power. Are running down with Not enough to say people now Webster. know that there's the Bilderberger Group. Webster. That won't help them. They drain incredible amounts of power. Sure. It's going down. I said, Tim, it's probably more, 10 more minutes.
can we get a larger geopolitical Yeah, but this was it. This is no, the fighting saying, front. But, but, no, what no, to do? No, no, but I know you don't like this. You never want to talk about this. But if you want to do something, I'm telling you, not run ad busters. It's, oh, another one. The fight to recall Hold Walker. Hold on just a minute. The fight to recall This is what Tarbley does. He is in a craze mode. Our batteries are going. See it right here. Hold on. And I'm like, no, no, we've covered Greece. We've covered, we've, hold on, we've covered the polls. And I'm like, and I'm like, what about, I mean, I'm the interviewer here. I'm sitting here, he's going for like 10 minutes at a time. And I'm the demon. I'm the bad man. And, and listen, all I'm saying is, what's happening with the pigs? What's happening? What's happening in Syria? What's happening? And then, and then I'm bad. I'm asking geopolitically as a questioner every 10 minutes a question and I'm demonized that I never no you are you're like you're acting like I'm covering something you said it hey Tarpley damn it listen and I'm covering something up and I'm here interviewing your ass you are in an aggressive crazy mode and it's pissing me off okay all you you did. You said, you don't, hold on a minute. You said, I don't want to talk about these issues. I want to get to Medvedev and Putin's threatened to nuke and all this crazy stuff. That's what I'm worried about. Go ahead. Says, I never want to hear it. I want to get to other subjects before these things. It's about to die. I just want everybody in Wisconsin vote to kick out the fascist walker. Okay, great. Now let's go to Italy. The other issue, I want to know about Russia. I want to go to Italy. What about Bilderberg having ca the chess player at it? I'm for Italy. Here's big news. Fighting the bankers in Italy. Okay, got Michele Ruggiero. Michele Ruggiero is one of the gutsiest, most courageous people in the world. He's the, the finest investigating judge in Europe, probably in the entire Western world. Michele Ruggiero has just filed a five-count indictment against Standard & Poor's. And he's saying you guys have been attempting to destabilize Italy. That's the, right. They the downgrade. Destabilization they downgrade. But this is now a magistrate, in other words, a judge who can issue indictments. He has completed his investigation, and he's got five or six members of the Standard & Poor's team in Italy. Now, this is fighting. Fight the banks. He's not, he, he is the government, but he is part of the government that's actually doing the work it's that needs to get done. Fascist. No, he's they're attempting to destroy his country, okay? Now, concerning Bilderberger and their... their, their um, strategic discussion. The album is the BRICS, right? Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. But in particular, the idea of a BRICS oh, yeah. development bank. The BRICS development bank is, uh, as of the last conference, now being created. And the idea there is to create a system of finance clearing and a development uh, right, a credit source that would be independent of the United States dollar. This is one of the things that the, um, the Bilderbergers undoubtedly discuss. I'm very skeptical of reports that don't focus on an issue of that magnitude. Now, we, have, we wanted to hear about Russia. Let's go to Russia. Actually, yeah, there are, three, now, okay, there are three, three Russians here that I can see. One is a representative of the Russian Academy of Sciences, who I think is uh, probably pretty much the government. But then we have Anatoly Chubais. Anatoly Chubais is the expert of what? Privatization. What the school loves. Privatization. A deregulation. This is the mother of the oligarchs. In other words, it's thanks to Anatoly Chubais that we have Kadarkovsky, Potanin, Berezovsky, Guzinsky, Friedman, the rest of them. In other words, the, the state property of the Soviet Union was privatized to the nomenclatura, to the oligarchy, to these predators. And they have now constituted a state within the state. Right? We saw it in the, in the presidential election. But Putin kicked them out. Putin has fought them more effectively than anybody else. Now, what you are, the other guy that you have, in addition to Chubais, whose name is, 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 is uh, exit all across Russia, Gary Kasparov. Now, Kasparov is a chess champion. And he's but, a Bilderberg. What does that mean? Yeah, but who is he? This, this is essentially somebody who goes, he's an agitator who goes into the streets to organize a color English, revolution, a color revolution against Putin. And his ally is, quite frankly, a Nazi. There's a guy called Eduard Limonov, who calls himself a national Bolshevik, who I think would, his reference would uh, get himself pretty much into the, into the brown shirt category. Limonov 
is a hooligan. He's somebody who is with cops all the time in the streets to, to attack Putin. So when you have Kasparov, it's like, a, it's like bringing Limonov to the meeting. In other words, this is um, an affront. This is a primitive affront to Putin and Russia to have somebody of this wretched level of Kasparov. I, I'm amazed that he gets out. He's here now. So this is basically saying we declare war on Russia. So in the, basically what comes out of this meeting... What does it mean when Medvedev, even the Medvedev is saying a nuclear war? Because he's now writing, he's reading the speeches that, uh, that Putin writes for him. Chubayas is, is the, uh, the dark uh, side of uh, Medvedev and in the entire government. Now, what's coming out of this for, for U.S. domestic politics is a hard right turn. I see millions of signs. They want to dump Obama. They want to bring in Romney, Mitch Daniels. And now this is not just what they, what they want to do. The New York Times this week has this thing about Obama's kill list, Obama's terrorist Tuesdays, how Obama wants to, uh, he, he basically signs the death orders himself for Awlaki, the CIA lackey, and all these other people. It seems to me that this is, this is quite possibly the beginning of a Watergate scandal against Obama, coming out of the establishment itself. In other words, I look back, is it like the Pentagon Papers? Is it like, like uh, Monica Lewinsky? It's of this type. This morning on MSC, I was amazed, Chris Hayes of The Nation magazine, a left liberal. He's got Jacobs of the Army. He's got um, a panel of other people. He's got Jeremy Steele from The Nation. And they're talking about how Obama is committing murder. Now, if you want to do something designed to suppress and demoralize Obama's left liberal, the real shock troops of Obama, it's to put this story on MSNBC. Now, MSNBC is who? It's Jeff Immelt. Immelt, of course, a big support of Obama last time around. It seems to me Immelt, along with other groups in the ruling class, have now decided to get rid of Obama. A couple of others. You yeah, notice we're the, seeing the Washington Post and Politico talk bad about Obama. The, yeah, it's growing. I mean, you can see that the, the political wind has changed. I smell Watergate, at least a scandal, maybe not in print, but maybe. It's easy to do. It's complicated. Um, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, great barometer of what the ruling class is thinking. Bill Clinton goes to the pain trail and he says, it's not right to talk about Romney as a hedge fund hyena and uh, an asset stripper and a zombie banker. That's not fair to him. We shouldn't do that. Because that's Obama's only hope is to demonize Romney for what he is, which is an asset stripper, a one percenter, and all the rest. If Clinton comes out with that, he's cutting off Obama at the knees. And he's doing it along with Cory Booker and other people. He's doing that in the service of ruling class uh, cabal. The unemployment statistics this week were not only bad, but the previous month's results were brought from a wretched 120,000 to a microscopic 50 to 60,000. It looks to me like networks inside the government bureaucracy are also now in the line, it's time to make Obama look bad. So what this leaves us with is that this faction of the ruling class, you got to look at reality the way it is, has basically said we want a sharp right turn. So the Supreme Court in June, it's now June, the Supreme Court is going to come out on Obamacare. What might they say? They might say, Obamacare is unconstitutional and we have obiter dicta, right? They get to say other things. But you right? were against Obamacare. Oh, Obamacare, Obamacare, the reason that they're against it is they don't want Americans to think they have a right to health care. I do think that Americans have a right to health care. I know Ron Paul says... Huh? Let's not go off of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're saying it's a fake healthcare. It's a bailout for insurance companies. It's whatever it is. But it also, it operates under the query that Americans have the right to health care, which I believe they do. That's in the FDR Economic Bill of Rights of January 1944. But now, suppose the rats cabal, Roberts, Alito, Thomas, Scalia, they come out and say, it's unconstitutional, and we have some obiter dicta. No more Social Security. No more Medicare. No more Medicare. No more CHIP. S chip, no more Head Start, no more WIC, no more social safety net. I know Ron Paul agrees with all that, but for most people, that would be America losing 
insulting every economic right that they've won over Ron centuries. Paul knows that this socialism is to carry socialism. out eugenics. This is the American system. You know about system. eugenics, but oh you love vaccines, Tarp. You drink Diet Coke, Tarp. I drink Diet Coke. If you want to shoot your mouth Look, off, I'm why in do the, you drink Diet Coke? I'm in the red wine faction. Why do you drink Diet Coke? <laughs> why do you take the flu shot? I drink, you know, I drink pretty why much anything I can get. Flu shots? I get this at the at, at late no, at night. You I think, lecture me I think you're shots. crazy with this stuff. stuff this is i don't care about this issue hey look it's a smoke screen now come on oh come yeah on. take your flu shot it's a smoke it's screen it's a smoke screen that your yeah, kids got come on. autism but something's going on here if from government june, does it you love it from june if government handed out cyanide pills he'd love it i'd love it yes uh from june to december june is the supreme court the obiter dicta would say Every gain of the American people in labor struggle, somehow they were all so crazy, they wanted to have unions and economic rights, all the things that the Austrian school tells us we can't have, to December. And December is, whoever has won the election, the grand bargain. And the grand bargain is strip and flay the American people on this cross of austerity that Ron Paul loves so much. Not a cross that of silver? Merkel, from Merkel to Ron Paul and the rest of them, right? We have Ron Paul, we have the Republican Study Group, we have Ryan. And then we have Obama who does it in the most gradual way. The, the objection. Yeah, Mark, the, Mark I'm Anderson sorry. has a question. I'm sorry, let me finish. Your great Lord the, objection, the objection of the ruling class to this stuff. I didn't interrupt you. The, the, the objection of the ruling class to, to, to um, the Obamacare is they don't want you to think you have any economic rights. And then they want to take it into December. They don't like Obama because the austerity. The looting, the sacking is too slow. It's too gradual. Right, right they want to have a sharp My turn towards. Soviet rule will help us. They want to. Towards to $1 trillion dollars of cuts, which is what your Info candidate. Wars. Your candidate wants Info 1 trillion Wars. of trucks. My position is that the genocide against the American people is inadmissible. We're almost out of time. Mark Anderson has a question. Come over here, Mark. I, I, Come to the back. Sorry, this is my this is an interview with me and you. I'm no, sorry. No, but he has a question. Fine. We're all in here together. Our batteries from done. there. Go ahead. Well, I, why did Rick Santorum drop out quickly, so precipitously? I mean, I'm I'm just curious. Uh, he was there, and he was actually on a crest, and then boom, he's gone. I'm I'm just curious. The defeat of Santorum. Well, you have to look at every debate where he had a chance. Ron Paul was attacking him because Ron Paul was the attack dog for Romney, and anybody who watched it should be able to that fact. So he was overwhelmed with all, uh, all of that sorry, stuff. We're down to five minutes on battery. It's getting us notices. <laughs> it's going to die. Hey, we've been on five minutes for we the last 30 minutes. Thank you. What, you just, you just denied our battery's dying? I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. been going on for a long, long time. Right. Oh, it's like the end of La Traviata. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with everybody. He's accused us of assembling. Oh, come on. No, I'm done with you, buddy. It's over. Come on. No, no it's done. <laughs> Our batteries are dying. It's giving us notices. We never know what's going to die. He keeps saying we're making this up. You see us out, you see us out on the road where the batteries die. He keeps giving us notices. It's about to die. Yeah, I said, do you have a card? Please no, please I don't. Sorry. Points. Said, What's your crap. website? I'm out. Tarpley.net. So, I mean, is... Tarpley.net. Tarpley.net. So, Tarpley.net. So, Tarpley.net. So, Tarpley.net. 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 And to sit here and watch our batteries die, we're going off. And and then he tells us we're making that our batteries are dying. Hey, he gave us a ten minute notice twenty minutes ago. It's about to die. Just said two minutes, Tarpley. So we'll watch Tarpley talk. I know, but you just accused me of lying, man. That's pretty incredible. I thought you were a great kidder. You were always a great kidder. You always loved. Batteries are about to die. Go ahead. Go you ahead. lost your whole sense of irony. You lost because Ron Paul has dragged you no, into this you're abyss. No, saying my battery said. Went, you're too Richard, touchy. Richard, did it not just say five minutes? Fine. It said 14%. Fine. It's it says it's about to die. It's about to die. It is dying. It I is don't dying. know. Okay. Go ahead. I'm here to the bitter end, Alex. Tarpley, I like you. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We're not censoring you. Russia. No, of course not, and I'm grateful. Russia. The question is now, time to look for new political perspectives. I agree. I'm not saying Ron Paul's Jesus. 
and that's over. So whatever it is, it's over. So now we need a perspective how to fight this Islamic fascism of the uh, of the uh, Romney Mitch Daniels ticket, if that's what it turns out to be. And again, my proposal is look at this movement in Greece. Look at what they're doing. They just said, stop all privatizations. Ron Paul wants to privatize everything. Look in the Restore restore Record program that Paul put on his website. In there, you'll find his plan to cut two-thirds out of the food stamp budget and 15% out of the Pentagon structural budget. I thought it was supposed to all come out of the defense budget, but no. Suddenly we find that it's the social safety net that gets savaged and the Pentagon gets nicked a little bit. This is uh, worth looking at. Uh, other than that, I, I would appeal to people again, defeat Walker in Wisconsin on Tuesday. Stop reactionary and fascist Republicans from busting unions and introducing totalitarian rule in all these states. That goes for Snyder, it goes for um, Kasich and others. The reason they like Mitch Dells here at the Bilderberger Group is that he's the strike breaker who gets it done quickly and neatly and elegantly without much um, resistance compared to these other states. But above all, Syriza and the idea of a program. I have a five-point program on my website. I hope you look at it. Uh, it's a recovery program, and it will essentially give us the, uh, the ability to put an end to the current world economic depression. So um, I think that's the, uh, the strategic situation we're in. We are in a world economic depression. Once you know that, you must realize that what's going around you is not a market event, it is not a normal boost, boom and bust cycle, but it represents a breakdown crisis of the entire world economic system. People right, right now can see the United States is mired in depression. Europe is sinking rapidly into a depression that is probably getting already uh, as bad or worse as the United States. China is slowing. India is coming under pressure. The world is going into depression. This ought to indicate the need for a recovery program, not I, the free market. Okay. That. What about a worker for the U.S. government and Russia threatening to nuke Yeah, this? We, this we've done. Uh, we've done. No, I asked we've you done hours it all. ago for this. We're about to die. Tell me the video. We're about uh, what's to... your take on that? Certainly, uh, especially when we look at Syria, I've been been paying a lot of attention well, to they're Syria. All, they're saying they're invading. I mean, it's all over the news. I watched it this morning. It's bad. We had they the Hula massacre. Up. You should know that the Hula massacre was a complete fraud carried out by a death squad of 800. Uh, killers, Al-Qaeda, Salafis, and others came to Hula. They burned the hospital. They killed the people coming out of it. And then they went around and killed citizens of the town who refused to join in their civil war. Assad. So the death squad thesis concerning Syria, I think, is amply uh, confirmed. We just had Putin going to Merkel, Putin going to um, Hollande. Hollande is turning out to be a much weaker sister than he might have. Uh, he seems to be at least flirting with the idea of the French leading the attack once again. That has to be uh, watched. On this side, the practical side of it is the Walter Jones resolution in the House of Representatives, the one that uh, reminds Obama that if he starts another war, he will be impeached. I think that everybody Ron Paul has to, co-sponsored. That Ron Paul ignored for three months and then grudgingly co-sponsored. No, he co-sponsored. I would like to. I would like to hear Ron about. Ron Paul co-sponsored. I would like Ron to. Ron Paul co-sponsored. I would like to hear about. Let's just be honest, Arbley. Let's hear. Does Ron Paul include that in his speeches on the campuses? In his stump speech? No, he should. No, he doesn't. He should. He should. All right, fine. So these are uh, these are significant uh, problems because I think that's the uh, the leading edge of resistance war here, inside. Uh, the United States. Uh, Syria under the gun, uh, and of course if that happens then that involves uh, possible confrontation. But that is the, the attitude that I see coming out of this Bilderberg. Savage, genocidal austerity at home, perhaps cutting 25 to 30 percent of the American standard of living now with these new measures. The ruling class seems to be orienting towards this like iron filings to a magnet. The Supreme Court is likely, again, not just to say you have no right to health care, but that you have no economic rights of any kind. And take that then all the way to December. It is comparable to what, um, what we had with Carter. When, when I started attacking Obama in, um, in the spring of 2008, actually in January 2008, I said he is, that Obama at that time was a creature of the Bilderberger Group and the Trilateral Commission. 
and he would essentially be a new Carter. After Carter, the failure of the Carter administration was so catastrophic that we had 20 years of a reactionary nightmare under Reagan, Reagan, and so forth. Now with uh, Obama, if this pattern holds up, we may be going into a similar reactionary nightmare. And that's again where we learn that we cannot, if we're not crazy, we cannot try to save ourselves in some faction of the Republican Party. Rather, we've got to take up the mass struggle methods of Syriza. And remember, that all started here in Madison, Wisconsin, back in February of last year. That's where the mass strike started. So the mass strike dynamic is abroad in the land. Mass strike is great, but it doesn't solve anything. You've got to have those ingredients, right? Organization, leadership, program, and a strategy. If you have those, the strike can win. Without them, you fail. So all of this other stuff, chasing after ruling class candidates this way and that, no. Chasing after 20-year congressmen, 10 congressmen, or all sorts of other uh, individuals, this is pointless. The goal has to be some kind of independent force outside of the two political I would invite you, above all, break with the two political parties and start creating an independent force outside. Programmatic, class like Syriza, hard-hitting, fighting for working people, having demands that enjoy mass traction, not process reforms, not stuff about the free market, to help working families who need to pay the rent, stop a foreclosure, pay the tuition bill, get their food stamps, survive. There are 50 millions who won't have dinner tonight if it's not for food stamps. The answer to that is not to destroy food stamps. It's to create 30 million new productive jobs. So the realm of economic program opens up before us is the area where people have got to get busy and, uh, and go to work. Why are they trying to start a war with Russia? Well, if you, um, you look at the, the need of the Wall Street and London-based financial system, it is that they have to carry a process of primitive accumulation, of looting, sacking, super exploitation. This is the logic that leads you to a concentration camp, right? It's, it's the concentration camp on the installment plan. Uh, the reason that we had the Arab Spring was that those governments, whatever they were, that have now been largely destroyed, were some kind of barrier. They were able to say no to the bankers at some point, or might. Russia and China are able to say no. Beyond it, with the BRICS, with the, the, the process of the Shanghai Cooperation Group and the BRICS uh, organ on the other side, we have the actual attempt to create an alternative world monetary system that would be independent of the dollar. So that is the offensive. In other words, the defensive part is key for the Arab world. The offensive part is key for these, uh, for these, for these countries that we're mentioning, right? Br uh, China and Russia in particular. And we've also got people in other parts of the world, right? In the Balkans, as I said before, it's not just Greece, but Serbia, Macedonia, Negro and Croatia to some extent, are all gravitating away from NATO. They'd like to be in the European Union. I also have to say that what, what uh, some of you were saying about the Euro, I think, was profoundly uh, wrong. The people who support the dollar, the U.S. bankers, and those who support the pound, most British, want to destroy the euro. The goal is to destroy the euro. I regard the euro as a line of defense. The euro is like a convoy. The Anglo-American hedge funds are sending wolf packs into the North Atlantic. They want to destroy stragglers. Any country that drops out of the euro will be destroyed. It'll be destroyed. If it's the Greek, Greeks, their currency will be driven into the center of the earth. If it's Germany, their currency will be driven into intergalactic space. In both cases, the living standard of the country and their exports are destroyed, especially with, uh, with Germany that lives off uh, exports. So the idea, the idea that the Bilderbergers want to defend the euro is crazy. The Bilderbergers are the shock troops attacking the euro. They're the ones who use credit defaults. Swaps against Greek, Portuguese, Irish, and so forth. And now that's where we get back to our friend Michele Ruggiero, because we've got another example of fighting. If you're a government official in this country, look at Michele Ruggiero. There's a model of intelligence and courage, indicting Standard & Poor's, right? Here we have the Republicans saying, oh, 
Standard & Poor's downgraded. It's Obama. You're responsible. In France, we had the same thing, right? Everybody's worrying about the grade, right? La note, they said. What's your, what's your credit rating? This is despicable. Great nations don't grovel. It's in the bankers ruling countries by rating. Yeah, but it's also, it's propaganda, and as Michele Ruggiero writes in his indictment, it is the attempt to destabilize and destroy Italy using essentially what he's arguing. I mean, I, don't, I haven't read the entire indictment, but he seems to be saying that Poor's is an agency of the intelligence community, and it's carrying out these, uh, these attacks. So those are some examples of, of struggle that meant But you're not going to find it inside the Republican Party, no matter who your guy is. All I know is, entirely, what about Russia? Why, are, why is Russia threatening nuclear attack? Yeah, these, these are essentially warnings that have to do with two things. One is the installation of the anti-ballistic missile system. One of the worst things that happened last week was Hollande, the new prime minister of France, uh, president, said he wanted to change things compared to, to uh, Sarkozy. Hollande is open to the anti-ballistic missile system on French territory, right? Quel honte, quel honte, quel honte. What a shame. What, what, a, what a horrible thing for France. Otherwise, it's in Poland, Romania, some other places. The Russians rightly feel that this is a first strike system. In other words, it's designed to have the U.S. launch a first strike, and then the disorganized Russian second strike is dealt with, shot down by these ABM things. It doesn't really deal with Iran. It's a step towards a first strike. Uh, Putin just went to Belarus. Take a look at Belarus on the map. It's an absolutely key country. It's the country that could easy, most easily start World War III because Belarus has Russia on the one end and Poland, NATO Poland, end. If you start a color revolution in Belarus or a civil war, you could have Polish NATO troops coming in from the west and Russian troops coming in from the east. That could get a shooting like clash. Yes, although there you don't have NATO immediately present because Georgia was never a member of, uh, NATO, was of NATO. NATO was involved after the next. But I'm saying if you want to see the immediate clash of the two alliances, Belarus, that's where Putin went. So that's Lukashenko, the last dictator in Europe. He's the last holdout in Europe against NATO and the dictates of the, uh, of the Bilderberger group because that's, that's who we have. Here. The other thing that the Russians are concerned about, of course, is the port of Tartus, their Mediterranean naval station, and how they would uh, they want to keep in its current form uh, for their own strategic reasons, also because it's the strategic depth of Hezbollah, it's the main ally of Iran, so they, they want the status quo. And also, eventually, the Russians must see that if this just keeps going on and on and on, right, if they're knocking over one country after another, that at a certain point it's going to get to them. And this is a little bit, it's like Hitler, right? If Hitler is knocking over Poland, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Austria. and then France, eventually it's going to get to you, British, or you, whoever, well, the Soviets in, in, in that case. So I think they've, they've understood that, right? If you look at... Uh, well, they've read people. Right. And, but this, we're, we're now, I would say what we're operating in now is, if you look Lysinski. at the, the destabilization of Syria is basically patterned on what Hitler did to Czechoslovakia using the Sudetenland. Take a look at the chapter in William Shirer's Rise and Fall of I the Third it. Reich. Yeah, it's as good as any. It's basically uh, carrying out terrorism. Now, Hitler, Hitler foments terrorism in Czechoslovakia. Then and then he turns around and says, i got to intervene to restore order because my, my German minority is getting treated bad. The most recent one, though, is different. This was a false flag. Huh? This was this Hula thing. The Hula massacre is comparable to the Gleiwitz radio station incident with Poland. with Poland, where Hitler, Himmler in this case, Himmler, Heydrich, and, and some others, provide dead bodies, and then they turned around right. and they killed us. So this is, it, it, it's reported to me by sources in Syria that the, uh, the bodies, some of the bodies at least, significant bodies that were found in Hula had actually been killed in other places and then kept on ice and then brought there. Sure, I can't believe these phone. You were right, these bad guys. I can't believe how long this is going. Can you, Richard? I can't believe it. Maybe, maybe it's a good, good omen, a yeah, sign of divine no, favor for me. They kept running down quickly. This is amazing. Maybe I'm doing God.
from God's work after World War, immediately, to Poland, which did lead to a world war, and then the other thing is the Spanish Civil War that some of your other guests had been saying. In other words, I don't share this triumphalism that there's some movement that's winning against the bankers. I don't see it. Again, but if you, the like, judgment on we're that... We're getting record numbers out. You yeah, say it's not positive. Can it's not you? Good. It's positive, but is it enough? Can you shut down the United States with a political general strike? That was always the question. We thought this... You remember, we, you were in the middle of it. 2007, if Cheney started war... What's the answer? A general strike. The Socialist International of 1913 said, if the powers start a world war, we will respond with a general strike. Unfortunately, they didn't. There was Jean Jaurès of France who we're wanted 4%. to. We got five minutes. Well, 4% is where Caesar started, and they went to 30%. No, we're almost out of power. <laughs> I know. I know, us. but maybe there's, a, maybe there's something in that, too. So... Uh, break the power of finance capital, public opinion alone won't do it. It takes organization, Alex. This is the thing I, want, I would stress the most. Organization. Very important. But above all that, there's got to be an organized mass phenomenon, not tied to the political parties, not tied to the ruling class in any form. that has its own pro rights. We do, and we're fighting for them. Well, the globalists admit they want a post-industrial world. Talk about the environmental movement in closing. Yeah, but look, let's pay less attention to what they're doing. How about what we want to do? We need a fighting movement. It's got to be class-based. It's got to have class consciousness. It's class that there's the 99%, there's the people, and then there's the oligarchy, which is 1%. And of course, the... Uh, the, the uh, Malthusian we have here, right, Thiel and these other people, they're all that way. That is neo-feudalism. But neo-feudalism means the destruction of the United States government. It's part of neo-feudalism. You have to realize the anti-government rhetoric can be a boomerang because that's their program, right? You ask them, what's your program? States, microstates, rump states, secessionism, failed states, partition studies, as Soros now calls Major it. Major looting. Huh? Looting. Yeah, but is is rendered possible. And the British are willing to do it to themselves. If Scotland secedes from Great Britain, that will be an example for the world to see, oh, that's what we're supposed to do. Now, the British the British use their own country as a kind of a show window for the policies they want to push. An end gap. Serbia has been carved. Sudan has carved. Iraq has been carved. There's a plan to carve Iran, a plan to carve to carve the United States, right? We know the the nine nations or the 12 nations, whatever it is. Anybody flirt Great that stuff corporate rulership. with the IMF and NATO above and all these petty states, impotent, squabbling little things that can't, can't resist J.P. Morgan or Halliburton or ExxonMobil or whatever it is. So, again, Syriza, on the 7th of June, if they become the government of Greece, we will have an example. We already have an example, right? Just to have that program. Cyprus was on TV the other night for hours and responded. And this is building a movement. This is not just opinions. It's not a bunch of atomized individuals. So Cyprus, it's a fighting so force. Well, young, young, he's a yeah, That's the big danger. I've tried to, um, to, to point this out. Young guy in his mid to late 40s comes out of... Uh, I think he's probably started in the Communist Party. Communist Party did entrism into another group. Communist Party left. He stayed behind. He said, goodbye, commies, I'm with you. And he's, he's had to punch them down because they want to bring their traditional Marxist demands. And those are not the ones <coughs> you want to have. Your first demand is not to get out of NATO. Your first demand is mass economic demands that have mass traction. In other words, you've got to be doing something for that average person, right? Show six-pack needs dinner, tuition, rent, stop foreclosures. You get the idea. He needs medical care for his kid. You've got to deliver the goods. You've got to deliver the goods. Can't be process reforms. It can't be stuff about, you know, uh, reforming the Congress or this kind of crazy stuff. That's incomprehensible. Even Glass-Steagall. Glass-Steagall is a great demand. Glass-Steagall is a great demand, but this is uh, mystifying for the average person. What, what do I care whether 
two banks are together or, or separate. It's, it's a very issue in reality. But the average person, the leading edge has got to be, I want to assert your economic rights and help you to assert them. You see the difference? You see the difference between that and what some people seem to like? Need I say more? Hey, the batteries have been magically... Keep going. Like I got a question. I got a question. Webster, what American leaders do you see on the horizon that fit the bills that you're talking about? Or do you see any leadership at all that give you hope? Here's what I say. Break out of the passive consumerist approach to politics. I have people sending me emails saying, who should I vote for? Who should I vote for? I would say, get yourself out of that mentality. Politics is basically a full-time job, or at least it's a pretty good uh, hobby. It takes a lot of research. What you got to do, but it takes mass struggle. If you're in any of those states, if you're in Wisconsin or Michigan or Ohio or, or Indiana, fight Mitch Daniels. If you're uh, in other states, right, in, um, in California. See, he just died. <laughs> it's, it's dying. Look, dying. Okay. This is still feeding. Finish your still statements. Going. Okay. Um, half the audience. Go ahead. Where was I? Um, what leaders yeah, yeah, look, mass struggle. I Look, elections, presidential elections, that's all well and good if you got somebody. But we don't have anybody, won't have anybody. What can you do to change things? In California, Jerry Brown, he wants to cut. He's, he's, he's a, an austerity ghoul. And a, he's a total austerity ghoul. You know what you got to do with Jerry Brown? You got to take the Wall Street sales tax and ram it figuratively down his throat. In other words, Jerry Brown, you are not going to touch any economic rights of any American unless and until Wall Street pays a 1% across the board Wall Street sales tax. The Wall Street sales tax is coming in Europe. It's called the Euro Tobin, and we want it. The, uh, the Occupy Wall Street failed to make the Wall Street people pay for anything. Hit the Wall Streeters where it counts, in the La Banza. Make them pay. 1% on all their turnover. You want to have micro trading, uh, high frequency flash trading? You want to do a million trades per second? Great. 1% goes in the federal till. Half of that goes to the states. That way we can maintain the social safety net. Wall Street pays. They have a technocratic banker fraud. Let's tax their technocratic banker fraud. In other words, the problem with Occupy Wall Street is they want to complain. They're a bunch of anarchists. They want to sit around and complain. They're, the Occupy Wall Street program comes down to let's have a hippie commune in the park well, that's no good that. it's a fake opposite. more or less and ad busters don't forget them and graber graber the anthropologist we just saw them cavorting with lord julian assange the cia limited hangout artist unfortunately on one of these uh, television stations that people may see they, we're told that we're supposed to be happy about occupy wall street because they changed the conversation who's about the conversation we want power that's another point Protest is for wimps. Revolutionaries want power. So unless you have something where your politically leads to some hope for power, you're spinning your wheels. It's too late in the day for this stuff. Right? Education and uh, changing public opinion, all necessary. But it's got to be on the path to seizing power. And protest is simply, if that's the, go the end in itself, it's Impotent. Illustration of your goal. Cons uh, Alexis Tsipras of Syriza. You got to find it where you can. But protest is impotent. It's an illustration of your goal. Yeah, fine. But it's too late for this now. You get. Well, you got to protest. Say that in your own words. Illustration of the goal. He says it's the, the goal. I say it's too late for this now. We've got to get power. Protest is not enough. The goal of political activity is a revolution power that's what these poor these poor kids in Tahrir the kids in Tahrir couldn't get it the kids in Tahrir thought a revolution is where the army takes power in closing, talk about how big it is to have Kasparov at this meeting one of the first Russian it terror. is a, a, a calculated insult it's an affront to it is an unfriendly act uh, normally the uh, the US ambassador in Moscow would be called to the foreign ministry saying why did you commit an unfree act by getting that agitator, that friend of Limonov and the national Bolsheviks, into your country and giving him that kind of pro prominence? 
Um, yeah, well, he's he's really a Brzezinski uh, puppet because Brzezinski is the specialist in the color revolution inside Russia. The other one, I, the other one, I was wondering if they'd have Navalny, right? Alexei Navalny is this other. He's from. He's the great Russian leader who's from Harvard, Cambridge, Yale, <laughs> and he's now the. Uh, Nemtsov. Nemtsov is a. I'm, I can't avoid it, right? Nemtsov's program is about Paul. Privatize everything, deregulate everything, <laughs> austerity for the masses. I'm sorry, it is. You, if most people, if most people look at Ron Paul's Restore America, that looks like IMF shock therapy to me. Hold the mic up. That looks like what the IMF is trying to do to Greece, right? The people who have been striking in Europe against austerity. Can you make the connection? In other words, somehow we're supposed to believe that the, the, the second coming of Jesus Christ is a guy who says, I want to cut a trillion from budget. Well, no. And the, everybody in Europe, any trade unionist can tell you, that's baloney. Huh? Or what? What is all this Russians threatening nuclear war? That's unprecedented. It's the anti-ballistic missile question that I mentioned before. Or and on we Syria and three Iran. Minutes left. The other one did die. What's happening with Syria where they use Al Qaeda? What is happening with, with like with the announcements on Sunday Saturday shows that war is on? Yes, I think we, we may be close to it. I, I don't know. And, uh, you know, we've been to the brink with Iran several times, right? Many times. Syria. But now with Syria, right? It's the same thing. Is it real? Is it not real? Is it psi war? Uh, is it a bluff? Uh, leads to war by miscalculation and so forth. The death squad, what, what I'm citing is the, the official Syrian investigation cut by Brigadier General Suleiman. They had a press conference. I happened to see it on Chinese TV, CCTV. They showed the uh, Syrian general saying their finding is that a death squad of 800 killers came into the town of Hula attacked two military bases. The soldiers defended themselves but stayed fortified in the base. And they spin uh, it that it's a Syrian attack right. when it's Al Qaeda. Al that is, uh, that's uh, Dr. Goebbels, right? Remember that. that what the, about Al Qaeda? They Goebbels. are, a, a lot of the people in that death squad, as I mentioned before, are Al or Libyan Islamic Fighting Group or Salafis, right? We've now got this Salafi. And those would be. Uh, some some of them are from some of them from Libya, some of them from Chechenia, and you've got probably Wahhabites from Saudi Arabia who are being recruited too. So remember, it's U.S., Britain, France, Israel, NATO, plus Saudi Arabia, Qatar or Gutter as we sometimes say, and uh, United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. That's who's attacking Syria. Is that not a bold move? Is that not an arrogant, bold move to have Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda openly attack Libya and bring it down now and blow stuff up and then say, Hillary, oh, it's a horrible massacre when it's admittedly the West doing the whole thing? I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, it, it is, and it's shocking, and, and it is, above all, appalling that we're back to the same methods that were used by Hitler. But that is, that is where we are. These, are. these are the methods of Hitler in Czechoslovakia, Poland. And the methods of Hitler and Mussolini in the Spanish Spanish Civil War. Excuse me. <laughs> What's the next question? <laughs> no, but I mean this whole thing where Al Qaeda is bad, but there are Al. Well, anybody who didn't understand that Al Qaeda is the CIA Arab Legion before has certainly understood from Libya and Syria that Al Qaeda is the CIA. Arab Legion. Um, I don't know if I can remember this guy's name, but we just had the New York Times had an article, actually the Washington Post did, about the creation of a new intelligence agency, the the um, De defense strategy agency, I think it's called, and um, it's run by a deputy secretary of defense who goes back to the formation of Al-Qaeda with Brzezinski and Gates in Afghanistan in the early 1980s. His name, unfortunately, given the late hour, is escaping me, but 
He is currently serving in the government and he represents that great tradition. So they know all the use of uh, irregular forces, Mujahideen and so forth, from Afghanistan till now. And that has not changed. Maybe somebody else would like to. No, we're almost out of time. <laughs> hey, Webster, you said we were censoring you. Closing comments on the state of the world. <laughs> the, the obvious thing about the world is that there is now a coherent opposition to the Anglo-American financier oligarchs. I'm sure the, the discussion at Bilderberg was largely devoted to the question of the BRICS. Above all, Putin. They hate and fear Putin. Uh, there was a huge effort to start a color revolution in Moscow. It went nowhere. It was pathetic. The people, Alni, Kasparov, Limonov, and so forth, are pathetic. All right. Michael McFowl. This was, um, you remember that the attack on Libya was run by the power from the White House along with Michael McFowl from the, the National Security Council, the White House. These were also the people who ran the uh, I would I compared uh, that evening, I was invited on RT, I, would, I compared Putin's return to power, Franklin D. Roosevelt winning a third term in 1940, when the question there was, would Hitler dominate the world, yes or no? No. A world historical figure of massive power and potency who is either reasserting or asserting the hold on power. This G about, uh, I leave Ron Paul and these other people to, 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 uh, to attack Roosevelt. But the, uh, the other comparison, of course, is de Gaulle to France again in 1958. In other words, the return of Putin is a world historical event comparable to Roosevelt 1940 or, or uh, uh, de Gaulle 58. De Gaulle. So he took the nukes. He had the French troops seize the nukes. He was a nationalist. Tell us about de Gaulle. Sure. And not only was he a nationalist, but he was a dirigist. And I, I would stress uh, that, that side, right? The, the, the story of de Gaulle is that he, uh, he asserted French technological leader. He wanted to have a nuclear industry, a peaceful nuclear industry, a nuclear deterrent, the force de frappe. He wanted to have the most modern aeronautics. They wouldn't join NATO. They were members of NATO, but they kicked the headquarters out. Yeah, they had their the own NATO troops. headquarters was in Paris. The reason it's in Belgium I today. I they didn't trust them. But the point is, de Gaulle was a dirigist. In other words, de Gaulle was a Hamiltonian like me. He believed that government must foster and promote technological modernization. Full employment and economic prosperity. He was the opposite of the free market. He had nothing to do with deregulation, privatization, union busting. He wanted a hundred million French. He wanted natalité. He said, we are going to give you family allowances. We are going to give you health care. The French social safety net today is one of the most developed in the world, thanks in some to de Gaulle. That's what the IMF would like to attack. That's what the, the people at the European... So for eugenics. No. This is the health of the French people. Okay, when you uh, see a hospital, uh, do you see eugenics? Not, no, is that all there is? Well, if you're not listening to me, I said they want to get rid of the safety net. Oh, the they want to go over to eugenics. Yeah, they want to kill people. De Gaulle was, again, he wanted 100 million Frenchmen. He wanted to redress. How the, did they let him, though? Because I read where they sent the French military in to actually seize the nukes. You know that, right? They actually had a little quiet coup against, the, against NATO. Well, the, the French developed their own, right? They, no, they, but they had, some of the, they had to see some of their own. They expelled you, NATO. Yeah, you know about that. They expelled NATO and every, and every, they every part of it. They realized it was a coup. Right. They, they EU coup. They go 20 times. 35. They, they tried to kill him 20 times. Yeah, 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 yeah. 35 times, according to my count. The, the, the interesting thing about de Gaulle is he had the sense to kick out the NATO apparatus. Germany, by contrast, was plagued by bader meinhof terrorism. Italy by red brigades and other terrorism, they kept the NATO structure. France so what was kicked them out. France kicked them out. France kicked them out. France kicked them out, and they didn't guy? suffer so much from that so because go? he was a nationalist. He believed in the role of the state. He believed in it. He was a statist. The I, I have a book. It was given to me by a French ambassador. Doesn't De Gaulle Listen, mean the, the, the I'm going to tell you though it now. Means the Frenchman. 
no, of, of well, France. Well, but, of Gaulle, yeah. And a French ambassador, Raymond Offroy. Listen to this story. It's an important one. Offroy was the French ambassador to Mexico City. He was the one who brought de Gaulle to the state visit in Mexico. And the, during this visit, they sat together and he said, de Gaulle said to him, Offroy, we have done this under the nose of the Americans. We've just, we've, we've gotten right here into their backyard and we're planting French uh, values and French trade here in Mexico. So this guy, Offroy, gave me a book in French about son de l'état, the sense of the state. A great statesman means you know what to do with the state, not smash it, not break it up, not go for secessionism or God knows what, but to see the positive value of the state. That's the goal. And it means dirigism. You can call it protectionism, moralism, Hamiltonianism. I'm all those things. De Gaulle called it dirigism, le dirigisme. And he says, we're not going to have a command economy, but we're going to have a planning. We're going to build airports. We're going to build the fast rail. You know, you can go from Paris to Marseille in two hours on the T TGV. Why do they have the best aerics, the best trains, the best uh, research in many areas in Europe? Because de Gaulle, nuclear power, obviously, because de Gaulle made the decision with the priorities of France. Of course, the parliament, the political process played a role. But he didn't say, let's sit around and see if the free market gives us something. Because then for sure, Anglo-Americans would have destroyed him. So I think this is, this is interesting. Where is France today with Hollande? As I said before, Hollande, some things that he wants to get the troops out of Afghanistan. Very, very negative is that he's willing to have the U.S. Uh, anti-ballistic missile system brought in. Very negative is that in threatening noises against Syria. Uh, Hollande, of course, is a corrupt uh, individual. But what, what you have to hope for is de Gaulle also left behind a bureaucracy, which has been, at least in the not so distant past, the French bureaucracy was a big advantage because the French bureaucracy meant that no matter who the president was, you had these kooks like Mitterrand or Chirac, uh, I don't know, but the French bureaucracy was there to say, you are going to serve France. That is, it's being eroded, I'm afraid. Um, Sarkozy, of course, was a catastrophe for France, right? Um, Sarkozy betrayed everything. And he, he brought, brought France back into the NATO command structure for the first time. They should get out of it again, as should Greece and, and Italy. The guy that I knew in, uh, in Italy was, was a guy who had, he had been the deputy interior minister. This is um, the guy who commissioned the Moro dossier back in, uh, in 1970. And he said, for Italy, he said, we have to have anti-terrorism tous azimut in all directions. And this is de Gaulle's phrase. De Gaulle's phrase was, have your defenses going in all directions. Not just the Soviets, but the British and the U.S. and everybody else. And uh, the guy that I, I worked with in this, this terrorism study, he said, we need tous azimut. We have to be re realize that terrorism doesn't necessarily come from East Germany or the Soviets, but it comes from the U.S. and the British, and he was absolutely right. Well, Tarpley, we've now censored your interview. Okay. All right, so you have to make all your... I see you have... You're, what you're using is the rope-a-dope strategy. <laughs> so long, because you can't... <laughs> well, no, you're like... You're it's live, isn't it? It's live, isn't it? I can't believe... It? This was supposed an hour ago. It's that live, like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The yeah, other yeah, one died It's like live. An hour. Vainonda. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, it's all live. It's all live? Yeah, it's live. And he's like, you're censoring me. I'm like, no, it's about to die. It never died. Alex. One died, one died. Yeah, the the, the thing that, that what you yeah, did wrong wow. was wow. In, um, in 2006, no. Alex, in 2006, I told you, you should run for president. You have to raise your sights. Don't take it place second fiddle back seat to some politician Webster, you should think about political activity awesome. <laughs> hey, Hollande was business friends with the new Bilderberg Alex chairman Henri Castro did you talk about that is that significant it doesn't sound good it, I, it's I think it's uh, ENA isn't it uh, national de l'administration the ENARC Honestly, I forgot the name. It's the French know. School of Administration. They it's like you have the Polytechnique, the Ponts et Chaussées. They prepared the, the big leaders. Uh, I'll take like your word for it, but it's a significant. 
it's not good. Hollande, I mean, Hollande, what can we call Hollande? A socialist who doesn't believe in socialism at all. That's a corduroy mic, point at your mouth. Hmm? No, really? point the mic at your mouth. Oh, sorry. inside his own party. Right. There, there are people who are now getting, when he, when he said he was willing to have the USABM in France, there are a lot of people who were appalled. Appalled. And we're censoring you terribly. Anything right. else? What about the great demon Ron Paul? Well, um, I um, the other thing I wanted to say is it is better not to say that the anti Bilderberg demonstration is a Ron is is for Ron Paul because in doing this you're going to keep a lot of people out. A lot of people are going to say I don't want anything to I don't like finance capital. But I don't like some Republican. But we're just identifying the global elite. People can make whatever decision they want. No, but I would not say that this demonstration is somehow that everybody there was for Ron Paul. I don't.